Do you believe in flying saucers? It's coming this way. It's definitely coming this way. There is no doubt about it. This is weird. There's other life out there, and there's also intelligent life. That doesn't mean it's easy to find. It's quite natural to wonder about our place in the universe. To suggest that we're alone is inexcusably egocentric. The federal government knows fully well what is taking place with regard to the UFO phenomenon. And they're not sharing that with the American people. I believe that the object that I saw was extraterrestrial. These objects would hover, they would dart very quickly one way or the other. I'd never seen anything like that. Haven't since then. If even one of these sightings is correct, is perhaps the greatest event in all of human history. Flying saucers? <laughs> I don't know whether to believe it or not. All over the place, I think. You know, you <laughs> yeah. just never really know what you're going to find. Wait, we saw one the other night. I think that the world's too big for there not to be UFOs, actually. I think it's almost impossible for there not to be something out there. I'm sure that the, the, the government knows something, but I feel like right now it's kind of, kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Welcome back to BT. Keep your eyes to the skies, friends. <laughs> so Have you dramatic. seen what happened yeah, yeah. on September 20th in the skies uh, of Aurora? Not far from where we're all living right now. Like an Aurora. Look Aurora. at this. Oh. Borealis? Not a Borealis, D. You Whoa. explain this. What's that? That's okay. the moon? Somebody this moving while they're looking at the moon? This was at a stoplight at 14877 Young Street. Okay. Uploaded to YouTube a few days ago. We don't know by who. We Apparently, added the music. Yeah. The UFO was moving so fast. Was it a UFO? I don't know. They're speculating. It wasn't moving in a straight line. You'll notice the erratic patterns. Eventually, it stopped, seemed to hover in the sky. All of a sudden, it changed color and disappeared. In 2019, there were 849 UFO sightings across Canada, or so they think. The number has nearly doubled this year. Uh, that looked like maybe a drone? Mm. A drone? Drunk droning. I was going to say, like what about that? Yeah, yeah, drunk droning. Zigzaggy, right? That Mel, was a, someone on Twitter said that, people. right? Come on. Right? A BT was... viewer said it's Mars. They, they're saying this no, with no. like, they know that it's Mars. No, it's not Mars. Oh. There's no Mars. chance that's Mars. We did a poll on this one, by the yeah. way. 66% of our viewers think that's definitely not a UFO, and I'm okay. going to join that. I don't know what that was. Uh, it's definitely but weird it if you're seeing that it's, happening. It's like, all right. Filmed it. yeah. What was that? I like this one by way. No, it's not a drone. No intelligent life would want to visit this <laughs> knuckle dragging planet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a UFO, yeah. <laughs> it's probably time to stop calling people who believe in UFOs crackpots after the recent revelation that there's actually a Pentagon task force looking into them. One astrophysicist who has worked for the Pentagon's UFO program since 2007 told the New York Times that he gave a classified briefing to a Defense Department agency about retrievals from, quote, off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. Are we on the brink of full disclosure about visitors from outer space? One thing's clear, though. Plenty of people are taking another look at the night sky as they sit home during this pandemic. Yeah, and those who track UFO sightings say that there's been a noticeable and significant increase in the U.S. and here in Minnesota. Oh, fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. That's not an LNS, though, is it? It's not. It is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like a thing, it's rotating. Nickel 6 one thing. Roger, Roger. <laughs> 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 Roger, uh, <laughs> 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 Did you box moving target? No, I took an auto track. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh, dude. Wow, look at the fly, man. Look at the fly. In the language of the U.S. Department of Defense, these are unidentified aerial phenomena. Videos which add fuel to the belief of it's some that that we are not alone. The first incident was filmed off the California coast in 2004, an oval shape hovering, and in the words of the Navy pilot who recorded this, not behaving by the normal laws of physics. In 2015, pilots flying off the east coast of America spotted this. All of these videos have been leaked in the past, but the US government now confirms they are genuine.
In a statement, the Department of Defense said it was releasing the videos in order to clear up any misconceptions by the public on whether or not the footage that's been circulating was real or whether or not there is more to the videos. The aerial phenomena observed in these videos, they say, remain characterized as unidentified. The Pentagon recently announcing a task force to detect, analyze, and catalog what they now call unidentified aerial phenomena that could potentially pose a threat to U.S. national security. Officials from the Federal Aviation Administration say there were no aircraft incidents or accidents in this area Tuesday night, but multiple witnesses report seeing a large blue object fall out of the sky and into the ocean. Something is in the sky. What is that? This video was taken by Misitina Sape at 826 Tuesday night near Haleakala Avenue in Nanakuli. Not long after, a woman named Mariah spotted the same thing passing over Princess Kahanu Estates. I don't know what it looked at. And then I was like, oh, s. Started calling my husband then because it was all in the garage. I was like, hey, come look up there. Let me see what I see. The 38-year-old says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue object had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. I don't know what it was. This one was going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began, on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building, after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. On a we're in the water, whatever it is. She described it as being larger than a telephone pole and says she never heard it make any sound. We called 911 for have like one cop or somebody for come out and um, come check them out. While officers were on scene, she says they spotted a second light. My husband would look up and he seen the white one coming. The white one was smaller, was coming in the same direction as the blue one. They lost sight of the object after it passed over a nearby mountain. This morning, we asked Honolulu police if investigators figured out what fell in the water. A spokesperson told us they didn't have any information. Meanwhile, officials from the FAA said they received a report from police Tuesday night about a possible plane down in the area, but had no aircraft disappear off radars and no reports of overdue or missing aircraft. My administration is reclaiming America's heritage as the world's greatest spacefaring nation. The essence of the American character is to explore new horizons and to tame new frontiers. But our destiny beyond the Earth is not only a matter of national identity, but a matter of national security. So important for our military, so important, and people don't talk about it. When it comes to defending America, it is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. So important. Very importantly, I'm hereby directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force, separate but equal. It is going to be something so important. General Dunford, if you would carry that assignment out, I would be very greatly honored also. Where's General Dunford? General? Got it. Let's go get it, General. Thank you very much. It's a very special moment because this is the presentation of the Space Force flag. So we've worked very hard on this, and it's so important from a defensive standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, from every standpoint there is. Let me just say it's a very historic moment. Uh, the United States has been a spacefaring nation for decades, but we know that our adversaries in the last several years have uh, weaponized space. They've made it a warfighting domain. 
And so with the establishment of Space Force and the establishment of Space Command, the United States is now doing what it needs to do to protect our assets in space and to ensure that space remains the heavens by which we not only protect America, but we sustain our economy, we sustain our commercial capabilities, we sustain Americans' way of life. Delta uh, in the middle is a symbol that the space uh, community has used for years and years and years. The North Star signifies our core value, our guiding light, if you will. And the orbit around the globe uh, signifies the space capabilities that fuel our American way of life and our American way of war. Welcome to the first anniversary of that branch of our armed forces that will ensure for generations that America remains as dominant in space as we are on land and sea and air. Welcome to the first anniversary of the United States Space Force. It is my honor, on behalf of the President of the United States, to announce that henceforth, the men and women of the United States Space Force will be known as Guardians. After 30 years at the helm of the Israeli Space Security Program, and after receiving three Israeli security awards, retired Israeli general and respected professor Chaim Eshed is now unveiling that yes, there are aliens among us, yes, Israel has made contact with them, and no, humanity is not ready for them. Aliens exist, and President Trump knows about it. That's according to Israel's former space security chief. In an interview with an Israeli newspaper, he said, the aliens have been waiting until today for humanity to develop and reach a stage where we will understand in general what space and spaceships are. NBC News Chief Global Correspondent Bill Neely explains this one. Chaim Eshed is making the extraordinary claim that the United States and Israel have been in contact with a group of aliens for years, not immigrants, but extraterrestrials. Also, before you start doubting his words, the 87-year-old Eshed was clear in his recent interview with the Adiota Honot News that he's not talking about immigration, but rather about a galactic federation complete with an underground base on Mars where there are American and alien representatives apparently present. He also explains that President Trump both knows about them and was on the verge of disclosing their existence only to be persuaded not to by the federation in order to avoid mass hysteria and panic here on Earth. Apparently, humanity just still has a long way to grow before we can understand the gravity of their presence. The final question, however, is what do they want? But perhaps thankfully for us, Eshed says that it's essentially just to research and understand the fabric of the universe. And he said all this in an interview with an Israeli newspaper in Hebrew, but it's really taken off after parts of it were published in English by the Jerusalem Post today. He says he's come forward now in the hope that his news will be accepted as true. He notes that if he'd made these claims five years ago, he would have been hospitalized, but now he says, I've got nothing to lose. Well, so far, President Trump has not tweeted about this, though remember a year ago, he did set up the Space Force as the fifth branch of the US Armed Forces. Speaking of conspiracy theories that actually have truth at the bottom of them, the Corona Relief Bill the President signed last month contains a provision that hasn't gotten a lot of attention. It directs the Director of National Intelligence, in consultation with the Secretary of Defense and the heads of other agencies, to disclose what they know about UFOs within 180 days. So what are they gonna tell us? Nick Pope is an expert on this subject. He's former UK Minister of Defense. He's an official of the UK Ministry of Defense. He joins us tonight. Nick, thanks so much for coming on. What do you think we're likely to learn? Will they obey is the first question. Will they actually tell us what they know? And if they do, what will they tell us? 
Well, this is going to be a very interesting year for UFOs, that's for sure, Tucker. And yes, they will definitely have to produce this report within 180 days, so we can get this by late June. Um, it has to be unclassified, but can have a classified annex. So the answer, uh, what, what the public will get, maybe not a lot, but what the Senate Intelligence Committee, the Armed Services Committee will get, hopefully a whole lot more, and hopefully some answers to these questions that we've been asking for months now. What is going on in our airspace? What has the US Navy been encountering? And what is it that, that has been in these classified briefings that we know some senators have already had. What do you think they're likely to reveal? Well, it's interesting because Senator Marco Rubio said uh, he would almost rather this was alien because if it turns out to be China or Russia, uh, then we're in big trouble because the sorts of speeds and maneuvers and accelerations that these objects are capable of uh, really is concerning. And I, I hope that we're going to find out about that. It's interesting, just before Christmas, there were some leaks Sitting in Office of Naval Intelligence is an organization called the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. They're probably the ones drafting this report. Some leaks suggest they have not ruled out the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Yeah, and there may be physical evidence of the existence of these, of these craft, whatever they are. Have you heard that? Yes, I've heard talk of so-called meta-materials, and I think this report really will have to disclose. I mean, what, what the Intelligence Committee want to know is uh, ev everything in government is fragmented. They want to know who knows what. They want a single official named and put in charge of all this. And this is going to right. include FBI, by the way, as well as the military and, and the intelligence community. We want answers. And as it was in the days of Noah, verse 26, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. This day right here, Jesus said in another place, this is, this is a hard-hearted generation, the day that he lived in. He said, there's coming another day before I come back again. It's even going to be tougher. It's going to be like in the days of Noah and all the crazy things that happened in that day. And if you read your Bible very closely, you can see that a lot of the things that happened in the days of Noah are happening today. And then you can also see, man, some of the things that happened in the days of Noah are outside our realm of really familiarity. We're not sure about some of the things that happened in the day of Noah, but Jesus said it's going to be just like in the days of Noah, so be ready. What's he saying? Let the kingdom of God work in you. Don't get caught up in the outside. Don't get caught up in the preferences. Don't think you know. Don't bring your last church to the next church. Man, just keep walking with God. Know him in heart. Know him in reality. Because it's not going to get better on the grand scale of time. It's going to get harder. Let me say this to you this morning. Faith has become and is becoming one of the rarest commodities in the world. It's funny, Christians today will be like, well, don't talk about how bad it is. Well, I'm not talking about how bad it is. I'm just pointing out that it's dark out there and you need to be the light. Jesus said, as far as the world's going, it's going to get worse. It's going to be like the days of Noah. We were having a Wednesday night uh, service some time ago, and I don't know how the discussion got this to this point, but we got to the point of talking about UFOs. Somebody say UFOs. <laughs> Man, it's going to get quiet now. Brace yourself, Pastor Rocky. And I remember one guy in, this, one guy in the Wednesday night service, he, he said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you telling me that UFOs are real? And see, this, I'm just making a point. We talked about how UFOs are a possible uh, illustration for the things that happened in the days of Noah. But today the church is funny because it's so outside, outside our reference, our point of reference. 
Most Christians, if you talk about stuff like UFOs, they just laugh. But I'm like, look, guys, man, if you know about the kingdom of darkness, UFOs is a no-brainer. All right? Lizard-looking guys with big black eyes, they've been around for a long time. They're not coming out. It's coming out of the skies, nothing, nothing new, all right? We read Ephesians chapter 6. I mean, come back, shake yourself, come back to reality. Oh, I, 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 UFOs, I, we, can't, we don't believe in UFOs. Really? Do you believe in Ephesians chapter 6? Do, do you believe in scriptures in the Bible that say in the last days, man, times are going to get tough. There's going to be seducing spirits released into the Lord. Do you believe the Bible? If you believe the Bible, man, UFOs, yeah, it, it's kind of funny, but it's not funny. Because it's, it's things that not everybody can see coming down and talking to some people or kidnapping some people or implanting some people with certain things and spreading doctrines that are not godly. New age people pick it right up. Same spirit. You know? A lot of things like that in the world today. A lot of things that you got to be careful of, man. Be careful of keeping yourself open to the Word of God. When somebody talks about UFOs, you says, oh yeah, UFOs are no big deal, man. We bind them in Jesus' name. They're not flying over my house and they're not appearing to my family and they're not coming around here and they're not touching me with anything. But in order to do that, you see, you got to get past the place with, oh, that's, that's not real. The devil can make himself like an angel of light. We read in Ephesians chapter 6, man, the devil doesn't just, he doesn't live here. He lives in the air. He's the prince of the power of the air. It's no big deal and it's no big stretch to think that he's going to appear in the air. But see, it was one of those things, we're not picking anybody because it is outside our frame of reference for most of us to think about things like that. But that's how the devil likes it. He likes for us really to not have our thumb on who he is. See, if the Pharisees had really known who their enemy was, if they really had read and studied the book of Job, the book of Genesis a little bit closer, they would have known that, man, we need to be careful. We don't see everything. We don't know everything. And we've got someone arrayed against us that challenges what we do know and believe. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they did drink, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the days that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and removed them all or destroyed them all. Boy, Verse 27 looks a lot like today. They were more concerned about eating, drinking, marrying, what's going on in American Idol, what's coming through my smartphone, my iPad, my computer, what are they playing at the movies? That's what they did in the days of Noah. And they thought, they thought Noah was crazy. Noah, surely, I mean, are you kidding me right now? It's not gonna rain, what's rain? And I want to warn you this morning, okay, because we want to be a church that's on the cutting edge. I want you to walk with Jesus. And I want you to, I, I want to warn you that before Jesus comes, things are going to challenge what you believe. So you need to know what you believe. 